team, Pedal and Purpose. Welcome to your very first course, if you will. We're all going to get started on the same page and with something that I pride myself on talking about because without this topic, it is a crucial way for you to either succeed or succeed, but not in the way that you could possibly imagine at the level that you really need to. And when I say that, I mean your form is such an important part of what you're going to be doing when we're spinning together. And without that foundation, your house crumbles, right? Without the, the right foundation for your house to live on, you have nothing. It could be as pretty as you want it to be, but if your foundation is faulty, that's going to be huge for future. And we're doing this for long term. So whether you've never sat on a bike before or if you've been considered a veteran of spin, this is going to be a great way for us to all start on the very same page, get you started the right way, and level up as an individual and get those goals that we all want to reach. So we're going to talk about four different topics. The first one, under the umbrella of form, is going to be your feet, the position, how they should be sitting in the saddle, in the clips, all that good stuff. Also, then we're going to go to your position when you're sitting in the saddle. In the saddle basically means sitting on the seat, out of the saddle, self-explanatory when you come out, out of the saddle. And then last but not least, when you're doing choreo, what your body should look like. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, team. So we have the bike turned a little bit different just so that you can have a really good angle on what your body is supposed to be looking like as opposed to me facing forward with you. So when I'm shifting in and out of the saddle, you won't be able to see me unless I'm facing this way. And that's what we're going to do just so you have a better view when it comes to that. So when it comes to clipping in or using the cages, it's all personal preference. So I personally like to clip in. Everybody that uses clip on shoe or clip in sh shoes, you know exactly how they work. So I'm going to be using regular shoes to show you guys how to do this just so that all of our newbies know how to get started without having to invest in shoes if they don't know if this is the right type of exercise for them. So when it comes to getting into the saddle, you're going to start with, let's just say my left foot goes into my left cage. The cage is the actual cage that your foot is going to go inside of. So I'll start here. I'll grab onto one handle with one hand. My hand is on the seat of the other or the saddle. Slip this foot in, bring it down to its bottom position, and then I will swing my other leg over. That's probably the safest way to get in. Trust me, I've gotten in other kinds of ways. <laughs> but if we're going to do it the safe way, that's exactly how you should get started. So your feet go inside of the cages. What you're going to be doing, all bikes are different. You just want to make sure that your straps are tight around your foot. And with a stages bike, which is what I have, I would pull this close to the inside of my body, pull it inside towards my other foot. Then there's an actual loop that I can slip this through. Now that has secured my foot inside of the cage, so I'm not slipping out as much as I possibly could be. Now here's the difference between regular cages and clipping in. Personally, I am in love with clipping into a bike. And I think once you get the hang of things, you'll start to fall in love with it too if you're a newbie. Any of my veterans vouch for me. When you're clipped in, you are secure. You get more of that hamstring and quad type of workout as opposed to the entire time that my feet are rotating. Here, I'm having to focus on keeping my foot in the cage so that it doesn't slip out. Now, putting it through this loop, it is not bulletproof. So there's a good chance that my foot could slip out of the cage. And the best way to focus on that is going to be rule number one with your feet, toes up, heels down the entire time that you're riding. So when you actually start riding, I would suggest that you turn your bike just like this if you're in front of a mirror. Turn it this way and then focus on what your feet are doing. So my toes are going to be up the whole time. I drive down with my heels. If you find that you're pointing your toes the entire time that you're riding, horrible for your um, shins. If you ride focused on keeping your heel down and driving with your heel, that's not only going to help you to get the best workout possible, it's also going to help you keep that foot in the cage. Think about this. If I'm going so fast, good chance my foot could come out of the saddle or out of the um, cage. So always focus on toes up, heels down. And that moves us on to number two, position and form 
in the saddle. So what you're going to be doing after you've set up your bike, which will be our next video, you're going to actually sit here on the bike. My hands are going to be placed on the back side of the handlebars. So most places will number these positions. I always like to say on the top, this is my back bar and this could be center only because a lot of handlebars are different depending on what bike you're riding on. So when I say top, regardless of what bike you're on, that's on top, back handlebars right here. You know exactly where you're going. So when you're sitting in the saddle, your hands should be slightly, um, just like you don't have, you have kind of have a loo loose grip. You don't want to be gripped really uh, tightly. Right here on the back of those handlebars, slight bend in your elbows. You're not going to have them locked out ever. Slight bend in the elbows, chest is up to the sky, and your shoulders are down away from your ears. Right here, it's nice and easy. I'm just riding down the street, you know, getting my morning ride in. Could be evening, whatever. It's just going to be nice and easy. A lot of um, just really simple little things that you have to think about when you're here. So number three would be out of the saddle. The only difference that you have when you're out of the saddle is your hands move up to the top position. And also when I stand up, which is the one part that most newbies don't catch on to until it's either one too late and you start to blow out your knees or two, you start doing choreo and you wonder why you can't keep up. So number one, come out of the saddle, hands are at the top. Number two, my hips always stay over the saddle. So I'm here the entire time. Every single rotation that I have with my feet, I get a small little kiss with my booty on the saddle. That is normal. If you don't feel that little tap, that means that your seat is probably too low or you're shifted forward too much. So why is it so bad when you shift? Number one, you're not protecting your knees. So throughout the time that we are actually doing rides, you will always hear me say, shift your hips back one inch, protect your knees. What does that mean? So just like think about doing squats. When you squat, you don't actually squat with your knee over your toe. So right here, I'm right in line with my toe. I push down every bit of the um, push that I have when I'm actually exerting en energy to go down with my foot, you should not have weight going on the top of your knee. So if I come out of my saddle here, right, my knee is right in line with my toe, I push down. That is exactly what you want to happen when you're out of the saddle. If I shift forward, what happens is my knee is now pushing down when my foot is not underneath it to support it. So when I say shift those hips back, that's exactly what I mean. Your booty, your hips never leave your seat, ever. So you're gonna see during choreo as well, there are gonna be times when your hands are not on the top position when you're out of the saddle, but that's okay because that's basically just part of the choreo. Here's the difference. When I do go into choreo, I need to make sure my hips are back and wherever my hands end up being, my hips don't move. It's just my arm position, right? Anything that I'm doing, my arms are what is moving. This is my foundation, tight core, right above those knees. The knees and toes are right in line with each other. Nothing changes from that. So coming up, doing choreo, if it's push-ups, my push-ups come here. Booty is still over the saddle, and I bring it back up. Down to up, I still have that little tap my booty's giving the saddle. My knees are still in line with my toes. And I am not shifting forward like this. This is one thing that actually hurts you, hurts your legs, knees mostly. But it also keeps you from keeping up a choreo. So those are the four things that you really have to focus on when it comes to form. Trust me, it's going to take a little bit of time for you to get used to it if you are a newbie. If you're a veteran and maybe you're somebody who has done choreo for years but didn't realize you need to keep your hips over the seat, that's something we can work on. And as a team, that's what we're here for, pedal and purpose. We use the purpose to move the pedals to help us level up to the level where we need to be. And we're able to grow as individuals, not just by ourselves, but in a community just like this. See you guys on the next one.